Today, I'm going to teach you how to make clickable item displays. So let's start with the display half of this equation. Go ahead and copy the command from step one. And the first part we'll pay attention to is this part right here. So this is the most important part of the whole command. This controls what item will display in the case of an item display or a block in a block display or text in a text display. So you can change this part to be whatever you want. Um, it could be a block of stone. We could have this be a diamond sword. I'm just gonna set it to be something pretty simple here, a regular old block. Ta-da, look, an item display. Now you have a lot of control over these display entities, so let's take a look at some of the other options. Let's say you're like, hmm, that's too small, I think. Well, you just go to this scale section and you can change these numbers, they have to be decimals, to whatever you want. So I'm gonna make a, a flat pancake here. <laughs> um, they, they don't have to be uniform, so you can have different sides be different lengths. So you can see we have kind of a flat pancake, you can sort of see that, that edge there. It's not as big as the other edges, so we have this sort of pancake that faces us no matter what. So the scale option here is universal to all the display entities, and the other options we're going to be talking about are also universal. So let's say you're like, I don't like how it faces me all the time. That's kind of annoying. I want it to just sort of stay put. Well then, what you do is modify this billboard option. You can change it to horizontal or vertical to rotate around those axes, but if you want it to stay put, you would do fixed. And so we have a flat pancake that is fixed. <laughs> Almost looks like a computer monitor or something, <laughs> at least shape-wise. Now let's say you're building in a dark area and you don't want this thing to be <laughs> practically glowing. Well, then you can modify, you probably guessed it, the brightness option here. So you can either reduce these numbers, they don't have to be the same, or if you want dynamic lighting, you can just delete it all together. And so now it will take the lighting of the blocks around it and it disappears just like any other block would. And the final option is really more of a best practices thing. This tag lets you differentiate between item displays. So say you wanted to have like um, a weapon type of item display and then like a block type and you wanted to be able to easily tell the difference well, you could just add a weapon tag, weapon tag, a weapon tag here. So that allows us to selectively target only one. So let's say we wanted to remove that diamond sword or do anything to it really. Then in the at E selector, we just do tag equals weapon. And this makes sure that we're not going to delete all of these other ones that we've worked on and only the one that we wanted to target. So tags are a really easy way to differentiate between different entities. So fiddle around with that until you find something you like, and then we can move on to step two. So things get a little more complicated when we add in the interaction entity, but go ahead and copy the command from step two, and we're gonna focus on the width and height here. So you'll notice we only have two numbers. We only have two dimensions, and that means that we can't perfectly mimic whatever we were doing with scale, but you want to get as close as you can. So I'll copy the 2.0 from my scale before, but you'll notice it's not quite right. And that's because we're actually summoning from the position of the item display. And that means that it tries to summon from the center of the item display. Um, it's not smart enough to figure out that it needs to go below. So what we have to do is adjust the command by modifying the middle squiggle after position. So just subtract half of your height. So we had a height of two, subtract one. And ta-da, it's perfectly centered now. It, it doesn't look perfectly centered because of the whole billboard thing. There we go, if I point in perfectly the right direction, then it matches. <laughs> um, but you can change the size of the hitbox to suit your purposes. You can make it smaller or bigger, depending on what you're trying to do. Like if, if most of the time people are looking at it from a diagonal angle, then maybe you would actually reduce the width and height to something more appropriate. Say like this. So you'll notice we can right click on this and our arm swings. You can actually change whether or not that will happen by adjusting this response number. So if you do zero, 
Um, you can actually right click on it without having your arm flail, <laughs> which sometimes is the way that you want to do things. So right now we can right click on this white box, the interaction entity, and it's actually saving information based on when we clicked it. So here there's the interaction tag, it stores the player ID and it stores the timestamp, so 229699. We can click on it some more, 229994. So it's storing um, updated timestamp information, which is pretty cool, but it's not really doing anything with that. So we need a way to trigger commands to happen. And to do that, we'll be using a data pack. So go to step three and download the template data pack from there, install it into your world, and go inside the advancement folder and open the example file. So delete the template advancement and paste in the compact one from the description. And you'll notice that we can actually track NBT for the interaction entities using tags. Oh, what? It's coming back again? So you can make sure that this advancement only triggers for any interaction entity tagged weapon, or you can just delete the tags thing altogether, and that will just trigger for anything. In my case, though, I have one called Big Interact. So make sure to save this example advancement. So pay attention to the rewards key right here. You'll notice it's rewarding us with a function called template example. So this is where we're going to be activating all of our code that should trigger as soon as we right click the interaction entity. So that's where we'll be going next. So go back to your data pack, go to the function folder and open example.mc function. So this is where all of our important code will go, but there's one thing we need to put first. So copy this in from step four. This revokes the advancement we just got and makes it so that we can get the advancement again and trigger the whole cycle again. So this is pretty much uh, the reset button. And now after that, you can put whatever you want. So I'm just going to put say at e tag equals big item, just so that we can see that it's working. Um, make sure to save this file too. And we hop back into Minecraft, run slash reload to update the data pack. Let's turn off hitboxes so we can see everything like normal. And then we right click on our item display and stuff happens. <laughs> I added in some firework commands for a surprise. But yeah, you can see it said the say command. And of course that could be anything that you want to trigger. And if you want to make another one, just repeat steps one and two. One and two. And look at that, works immediately. You only need to make a new advancement and function if you uh, change the tag, or you can just make the advancement and function work for any tag. So there you have it. Now you know how to make interactable item displays that trigger various commands. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was helpful for you. Let me know if it was, and let me know if you have any questions about what I did or some of the more advanced stuff that's in the description. And if you have anything you'd like me to explain or teach in the future, put that in the comments as well. But that is going to do it for me. I will catch you in the next one. Later, later.